Hey everybody, this is Spinner Rack. This is we this is PD here. We Calvin Ellis. We lost a major player and uh we gotta speak about it. So we'd like to talk about Lean Win, um, writer extraordinaire, you know, co creator of the X Men, co creator of Wolverine, co creator of Swamp Thing, many Batman ish, many Hulk issues, many, just a DC and Marvel mainstay as a writer. Yep. Superman as well. Superman. So it's like uh, he's in the 70s, well, he's more of the format of when if you look at his comics, he always had human stories in the comic books. So, I mean, most people now we've lost the connection because he created Wolverine, so we just go to he created Wolverine. But in the Hulk issue, there's a, a ton of things going on in this two and a, you know, 2.2 percent of the story because it's like what's it, what's this issue 180. 181, 182. And then, the, and then the beginning of 182. But there's a full story in 1 and 2 where Hulk is fighting Wendigo and Wolverine comes in the second issue. And in there, there's a backstory that they're trying to cure the Wendigo. These two, this couple's trying to cure the Wendigo and they, they don't get it in time. The Hulk wakes up, this big fight goes on. And then the boyfriend of the girl takes on the Wendigo and takes on that tragedy and she didn't recognize him. So there was always human elements to all of his stories, which would be, would be Swamp Thing, um, you know, as, just as a writer. He'd always had those moments which, you know, the Hulk and Cracker Jack Jackson, uh, where the Cracker Jack dies and the Hulk makes his tombstone. And also the caption writing, which was almost like very novelistic that he did, more so than any other writer. And I think John Byrne, you know, definitely used that in his style when he was doing the Fantastic Four when he first started. You could see a heavy influence on that. So, I mean, it's just, you look at those comic books and I always push because everyone like says, no, it was Peter David. It's like, go back and read those Herb Trimp and Lean Wynn stories and those Herb, you know, and the Sal Buscema and Lean Wynn stories because they're very strong if you read, you know, read the captions, read the whole thing and it's very entertaining. So. Any other thoughts that you have on this? Well, first, and you know, this will be some maybe some comedy for some of you, but I always thought Ling Wen was Chinese. Mm -hmm. So, hey, it's just you know, because when I would sound out the the name in my mind, since I didn't have to pronounce it, I thought he was Chinese. I didn't really learn what he looked like until like a couple of years ago, to be mm -hmm. quite honest. Meaning, I thought he was Chinese all of these years. <laughs> Because, you know, you really don't get to meet the people, and I'm yes. not always looking to see yeah. what they look yeah. like. I'll look to see what issues he did, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. My, uh, my first introduction is, and I, used to, I, I was a kid, and I actually had the copies, you know, the Hulk story, same one that you went on with uh, Wendigo, and so on and so forth. But the one, of course, me being a big Superman fan, the one that really resonated with me that I've always remembered is that he creates this character called the Galactic Golem. It's a Lex Luthor story. Where he creates this, you know, oh, if you know what a golem is and you know what the galaxy is, then you put them together. You got, mm -hmm. you know, galactic golem. <laughs> but it's this really powerful entity that challenged Superman, and Lex Luthor was always doing this sort of thing. But like you said, there's, there's more of a human story that goes behind it. So, you know, the galactic golem comes and, you know, fights Superman. But in, in beating Superman, it wipes out every single person on the planet. So Luthor has to sit there and say, well... I've achieved my greatest goal. I've gotten rid of Superman, but in doing it, I'm now the only person left on Earth. And he's, you know, walking around seeing if there's anything he can do to try to, you know, to fix this. And then how is he going to be able to keep his sanity because he's the only person? And he's wondering, you know, he gets the chance to wonder, you know, is, you know, is this end result, you know, what I wanted at the end of the day? Was my hatred of Superman misplaced? And so he has to wrestle with that. But, of course, he didn't take out Superman. Superman went and, you know, before he punched him, and mind you, th this is for me again how powerful the character is. He's cocked back ready to punch the Galactic Golem. And he's still thinking, you know what, if I hit him this hard with all this energy, it might take out everybody on the planet. So somehow Superman was able to use the excess energy of the Golem and vibrate everyone on Earth to another dimension. <laughs> he then killed, the, he then knocked out the Golem, but he missed, oh, he missed slightly, and so it sent him to the other dimension as well. So everybody was fine. Superman comes back, he gets rid of the golem, okay, he brings back all the people, and then he's taking Luther off to prison. And Luther's actually happy. He was like, what are you smiling about? He was like, hey, it's just good to see everybody again. <laughs> so, you know, that type of issue where, okay, it's not just, you know, it's not just, you know, put up your dukes, that sort of thing. And, and it's, a, it's a something to say about the Bronze Age as well, because a lot of people forget that the Bronze Age was part of the maturation process of comics. 
where in the Silver Age, you might have had just like some bang, you know, some, you know, bang, zoom, that sort of thing, which was still fun at the end of the day. And they would have heavier stories from, you know, here and there. But then you go to the Bronze Age, and the whole idea was to have something a little bit more weighty, a little bit more gravitas to it. And that issue is in the same vein as the uh, Hulk stories, 181 through 182, you know, where it's not, just, you know, on the, on, the, on the face of it, it may just look like, okay, Superman and Luther are doing Dukes again. But then you look at it, and Luther has to actually question, hey, you know, and we, we know what the answer is going to be, because in future issues, he's going to come after Superman again. Mm -hmm. But he gets what he wants, and then he has to actually wrestle with the whole thing. You still get all the stuff that you like. You know, you get to see Superman use his powers in a very dynamic way. Luther come up with one of these schemes. The two of them wrestle. But at the, as you said before, that extra added element to it, which made for, you know, I won't say an adult, more adult story, but, but definitely an older, you know, a, story that's more probing, and Lin Wen was very, very good for all of that type of stuff. Uh, I guess the thing that really bugs me is that I think within the last two or three years, we have lost some really big comic book names. Mm -hmm. The comic book people we have now, I think, are really, you know, they may be known because they're a good cover artist or they have a strong fan following, but not with the same type of contributory power that I think we've had from the previous guys, where Lin Wen or well, Starlin is still alive, but these guys, you could put them on books and their whole idea was, okay, now I'm going to tell my story. They looked at the characters and said, okay, this is what a cosmic story should be, and this is a cosmic character. Yeah. This is a supernatural story. They knew that a supernatural story is not a magical story, that these are different, mm -hmm. why they're different, and how to drag the best, and you know, how to literally drag the best out of them. Because a lot of times these guys put, I think, you know, we discussed it with John Byrne, where John Byrne would say, I don't like the Legion of Superheroes. But when it's time to write the Legion of Superheroes, yeah. he knows the characters, how they're supposed to interact, and what we're supposed to get out of them, because this is what the you know this is what made these characters you know into fan favorites at the end of the day, and you know, we, we're losing guys like that. Not that Lin Wen I think was you know on any book regularly, but you know we're, we're losing that sort of aspect to comic books, and comic books is in enough trouble as it is all the time. Yeah. You know I'm always sorry to see you know one of these I'm always sorry to see one of these guys these uh, these bulwarks of comics you know pass on. And it doesn't really feel like there's anything to replace them. It just feels like, uh, you know, there's this great storied history of comics and we just keep losing a pillar after a pillar. Eventually we will lose the big one and when mm -hmm. we do, we'll see what, you know, comics are like after the day. But if you've never read any of Len Wynn's work, you know, I, you know, hey, uh, to be honest, Hulk 180, Hulk 180 to 182 is easily, easily accessible. Yeah. Yes, they yeah. reprint that, so, they, they have reprinted yeah. that so many times. Because if you look at even 182, and this is also a person who's also, you know, worked on a Fantastic Four. I mean, before Byrne was doing that, they were trying, he was trying, with Perez, they were trying to get the, the team back to prominence. And you can see the elements they did with the costume and the writing and stuff with Reed. But look, look at 182 where Hulk meets Cracker Jack Jackson. And Cracker Jack isn't, you know, the well, it's not a scholarly person. He's this, you know, vagabond, like a homeless guy. And that person's telling the Hulk, you know, man needs to know how to spell his name and teaches the Hulk how to spell his name. And he, you could see the Hulk feel this importance of not just saying the Hulk, but being able to write it. And then in the end of the story, Hulk having to use these skills he just learned, you know, to write again. So it's that sort of powerful writing that you can do. And I think we've talked about it in many of the independent comics that we reviewed, that just adding a caption and someone who understands how to write a caption. You could do like Stan Lee, or you can do like um, Lean Win, which is more like a prose, sort of like a description, that sort of thing. Uh, what's it, an omniscient narrator that's not involved in the story? And that you can do that, and it can help these characters build the, build the setting, even though with all this fantastic action that's going on. I think a lot of comics would, would, it would service to help them. And that these type of writers that aren't in the business, aren't working regularly, could help these sort of stories. So, I mean, not, you know, as we just said, besides the main thing of being more adult stuff with the Swamp Thing, he did a long run on Batman, Fantastic Four, um, this, you know, just a ton of stuff. And then I would last, the last bit I would say is not just, people look at the X-Men and say, well, those are more Cockrum's characters, and then Claremont took him over. Like, Cockrum had these sketchbooks of characters, and then he looks at it as like, okay, this, this girl, this black girl that turns into a black cat, Let's give her the weather powers and give her the white hair. And that's how we get Storm. Yeah. And then it's like going, no, redo <laughs> this one. I want you to change this. And they worked, they collaborated. So even though he did 
two issues or two and a half issues of the X-Men is a giant size, so you can say three. He was involved in the creation of the X-Men. So he needs that, you know, he needs those um that appreciation and that char those characters too. So we would like we you know R.I.P., you know, we enjoyed all of his work and uh, we definitely recommend you go out finding some of that stuff and you know we presented we'll be presenting images in this episode you can see and you know ask about it we will we'll definitely cite the stuff we like in the comments thank you yeah buy a back issue buy a reprint a lot of good stuff out there you know mm -hmm. godspeed to lin win but thankfully his work lives on and the best appreciation i know that we can show for it is to go out and read it All right thank you everyone